Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and we're right back into Warplan Pacific. This game comes out tomorrow, April 29th, in the year of our Lord, 2021 AD, if you common era, you call it what you wish, it's 2021, I'm being told, April 29th, this game comes out tomorrow. Um, and so I'm trying to get in as many videos uh, here as I can. So when you start playing the game, if you have a question, you can kind of come to it. I may also make like a little two or three episode tutorial. We shall see, um, you know, if that's something that people want. I'm always happy to make one of those. I'll get the pencil out and start doing math and stuff. Uh, <laughs> wow. You're like, yes, give me some more of that, buddy. Um where are we here? Well, I'm still really liking the game, all right? And I think now, I've played enough of it that I think now this comes down to two things, whether this is a really good game. Uh, the first thing has to do just with gameplay itself, and that is how these naval battles are going to play out with two weak turns, two operation points, 24 hexes that a naval unit can move per operation point, how are these naval battles going to play out? I, I We still haven't gotten in one yet, so it's hard for me to kind of envision how it's all going to work uh, doing naval battles that way. Um, I know that I'm certain there's been a lot of thought put into it because there's been a lot of thought put into this game in general. Uh, it's got a, a lot of really great systems. But if you're going to make a Pacific War game, the kind of, you know, the most important thing ultimately is how do the naval battles play out? And we just haven't done any. I mean, we've had a scrap with a submarine. We've had a submarine sunk. We've sunk a submarine. But those have all kind of been automatic functions of the game in the convoy system. Um, we ha ourselves have not, like, had a surface battle. And so that will be important. You know, a carrier battle, a surface battle. How does that all play out? What about assaults onto islands, whether big or small? How are those done? And, you know, those are just things we're not going to have the answers to when the game comes out tomorrow. At least I'm not going to. Uh, but I've, li I've, I've really liked everything so far. I have no complaints. Uh, maybe little bitty things here and there. You know, I wish the reports... When you click back on the map after looking at a report, I wish when you hit reports again, it went right back to that same report because you're probably looking for the exact same information, but a little further down on the report or something. I mean, that's such a small thing, though, and an easy programming fix uh, that that could be patched, you know, and that's just like nothing. Um, so I've got some small little complaints. But the big gameplay feature so far, I really like. So I said there were two things. So there's that one thing. And then the second thing, you know, the, so the naval battles is one thing, whether they be surface battles or carrier battles. And then the second thing uh, is something I've talked about quite often in these videos. It's all how the AI is going to perform once it's off the major script. And so once we get into 1943 and we throw some different things at it, you know, there's probably like three or four different approaches the basic allied player would make. And so I'm sure they've scripted or Alvaro, I say they, you know, it's a it's a one man band. Um, I'm sure that they, he's got a script for, you know, four of different eventualities. Uh, but once you start getting into all permutations of those, that's when AI starts to break down a little bit. You know, I mean, even in a great game like War in the Pacific AE, we've had one of the developers tell us flat out, do not overstack Rangoon and defend it. Because if you defend Rangoon like it's a fortress and you just will not let the uh, Japanese AI take Rangoon, it breaks the AI. And so... You know, even in an amazing game like that, that I had 10 or 15 developers working on it, uh, or programmers working on it for one development team, or two development teams, I should say, even then, you know, the AI is just very hard to program. So we'll see. We'll see. But everything I see so far, I like. All right, let's jump in here. Now, one thing I've been thinking about is not only how to structure these episodes, which is important, obviously, I want you guys to look at this in kind of a structured manner, but 
sort of more basic than that. How does how am I going to structure in my mind each turn? You know, I, I'm sure you guys do the exact same thing I do. When you play a game that you like to play and you play a lot, you get a certain kind of uh, pattern of what you do. What do you look at first and second and third and, you know, to make sure you're catching everything. And that way you also, I think, learn the game because it's just kind of a natural human progression, right? I do one then I do two, or I do A, and then I do B, I do C. Uh, and then you get to C, and you don't know something, but you're not lost in the big picture, right? So I've been thinking some somewhat in the big picture of how I want to structure my turns, which will also help me structure these episodes. Well, you may say, well, you spend the first five minutes uh, uh, talking about <laughs> these bigger concepts. Play the game, my friend. I agree with you, but I think the best way anyway for me to play this is to go backwards on these buttons. And I think the first thing I want to do is go to deploy any new units that we have. And then we start there, right? Let's deploy them. We don't have to move them, but let's get the counters down on the map. I was thinking this is really a board game, right? I was thinking, well, how do I play board games like this? Always, you're so excited that next turn you're going to get to put more counters on the map. So let's go put the counters on the map. Okay, and so the UK this time is getting the Ramillies. This is a battleship squadron. It is ready to deploy. Now, where can it deploy? Well, let's back up. You see the map kind of go dark there. And there will be a green box or green boxes where this can deploy. Now, I would suppose it could either deploy up here. I don't really see anything because that's, um, that's the landscape. Or the major base is down here, and that, that is where we're going to... You can see the green right there. If we go into it a little bit closer, there's green. You know, that, that's where it can deploy. I don't think it can deploy in Australia. No, I don't see it here. And that makes sense, right? Because this was built back in the UK, maybe in Liverpool or someplace like that. It's going to sail down around... Uh, the Cape. Uh, it can't go through the Suez Canal. The Germans right now control the Suez Canal. And so it's going to have to go out and around Africa, meaning it's going to deploy right there. And there we go. And then we've got the De Reuter Light Cruiser Flotilla. Now, this is interesting because this is a Dutch, you know, the De Reuter is a Dutch vessel. Now, it's got stuff with it. It's a flotilla, right? Um but it's like the Brits uh, commandeered this. It was at Colombo when the Dutch um, gave up. You know, when the Dutch surrendered, the De Reuter was in at Colombo. And I think, I think the UK commandeered it. And I think we're going to have to put it there. But let's see if we could put it in Colombo if we wanted to. Um, there is no more Dutch territory. So, wow. They're down at Dilly, my friends. We've got to watch the heck out. They could launch an invasion of Australia from here. Um, okay, we need to get some ships over there. Well, it looks like that has the De Reuter has to go in there. Okay, so the UK is going to get another division uh, February 19th. Now, it'll be interesting to where that can deploy. Can that deploy in India? I certainly hope so. Uh, or does it have to deploy here and we have to transport it? it? We'll see. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, next time we will get that division and we will find out. Okay, the U.S. has the 11th bomber group that's ready. Okay, that's fun. Uh, let's go over here and figure out where it could possibly deploy. Well, you can see the Hawaiian Islands. It cannot deploy there. It looks like it's U.S. West Coast or bust. Uh, in my wildest dreams, I, I hope it's out here on Pago Pago or something. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. No, there's no green here. It's going to be a U.S. West Coast unit. Um, I don't know. Let's go down here and look. Uh, we kind of have to put it in San Diego or right on top of this oil. I guess we could put it next to this in San Francisco, but let's just put it in San Diego. That's fine. Uh, okay, cool. And we'll come back to those. Now, the U.S. gets an infantry corps small next turn. 
So we're February 15th. Uh, I'm no math mathematician, but that puts us at February 22nd. I don't think 1942 is a leap year, unless I'm crazy. Uh, and so then we get on to the 6th, the 13th. Okay, I mean, we'll finally get a transport on March 23rd. Let's hope it's not too late. I mean, it's crazy how fast the Japanese have come. Um, this will be interesting. I really hope this can deploy in India. This would help us a lot, but I have a bad feeling that it can only deploy in uh, the African, the UK African bases. Yep, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to sit here and spend that much time dreaming. Uh, supply trucks. Okay, do we have anything coming out soon? The uh, Aussies, Aussies have an infantry division coming out March 5th. Okay. And this is fun. This is nice, right? Working this way because we can kind of see, you know, what we've got new on the board. Uh, and that may actually change what how we move something else right so that's good um india does have something coming in march 1st unfortunately that's not next turn but the turn after and march 5th okay so they will both come in two turns 20th division so two divisions okay um new zealand has nothing philippines has nothing okay now then so i'm going to work backwards here combat log what happened What's happened this turn? Let's actually go back to, to what's happened last turn and just, you know, fly around the map here. Uh, partisans are trying to mess up the rail outside of Peking. Uh, more rail. Convoy attack. That was us. Um, wow, they only have one escort defender in here. They've got two big surface fleets coming this way. Goodness gracious, we're in trouble. Uh Okay, convoy attack there it had one sub hunter bonus. They have that because they had uh, some cat, you know, some ship group that was sitting on this, so it gave a sub hunter bonus. We didn't get anything. The pike didn't hit anything, unfortunately. The grayling did not hit anything. I'm surprised they only had one escort in South China Sea. Okay, down here, uh, what happened? Air to air. Oh, we did get in some air to air. Nice. Second Air Division took, wait a minute, is that true? Axis attacking, defending units, first AF. Hold on, I, I wanna go see, what is this, what is the name? First IAF, Indian Air Force, right, makes sense. Uh, let's go back to that. So second air division must be the Chinese or the Chinese Japanese air division. So there was some air to air out here. They were trying to bomb. Yeah, there we go. Second air division. We had the first Indian Air Force. Okay, so we did have a little air uh, to air there. Yamashita was the attacker. George Giffard is the general down here. We should go look and see if we should replace him. Well, while we're thinking about it, let's just go look. What is Giffard? He's 6'6". Six, six, hey, that's not bad, I don't think. I mean, I haven't gone deep into the... Yeah, I mean, he's far and away. I say <laughs> far and away. 6'5", six, 6'5", five, 6'5". Six, five, six, five. Now, I wouldn't say that's far and away, but uh, we couldn't replace him if we wanted to. We've only got seven command points. It's been seven turns. It costs 15 to replace a British general now you may say he's indian no i i don't think george giffard is indian uh if i had to guess i think these are british commanders um okay cool well i mean these guys are going to have to back up a little bit uh they've just and we've already lost rangoon so that's fine we'll just go back there is he still dug in yeah he's got a one entrenchment i don't think he can hold here uh but they've still got 10 of 10 strength this will still cover him it's got a range of six and we've got it on full support so it automatically comes out here and does that all right so let's continue looking here uh oil field planes entrenchment we got a little bonus for the entrenchment that's about it attacker losses one air one land we took one air loss oh i should look at that uh, oh, it's on priority, right? And so uh, it did recover, even though we took one 
hit point loss. Uh, we're still on 18 of 20. That looks pretty good. I, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take that off priority. Uh, I think we're pretty good there. Um, fine. Okay. So we had that land combat, and then we had this one where we shattered. Uh, that's not good. Um, okay, I'm just kind of looking. We had entrenchment. We had the woods. Uh, so we got a little bit of a bonus, but they they had two full brigades, uh, 11 to 1 odds. We just shattered. I mean, there's not any losses because there was just a shattering. Okay. Here we had a bonus of 1.25 for being in the hills, and we still got knocked uh, pretty hard, it appears. Uh, but they took one and we took no, but we took zero, but we retreated. It was 33 to one. So they should be kind of mad. They took one, um, land loss. Is that right? Yep. Okay, cool. I'll take it. We also retreated, I guess here. Um, and then we must have shattered on a second attack. We've got uh, Fei Kwai Chang out here in charge of the 12th Army. Entrenchment was good. Forest was good. Didn't matter. They did take uh, one hit point loss. Here they took two. Uh, oh, wow. There was some air stuff going on here. They had the air division out here. It was one-to-one -one odds, though, because we had entrenchment, a forest. We held. We did two damage to them. Uh, here's another. This is where that unit shattered the 12th army group they got them the second time uh they did take a hit you know one hit point loss there but didn't matter uh defender two losses okay they held here but we've taken two hit point losses it was four to one it wasn't seven to one uh which is what it takes to shatter or just disintegrate i actually kind of like that um mechanic in strategic command it used to just drive me nuts that you would have like 50 to 1 odds and the unit would just always oh it took two hit point losses that's it here we've got a retreat mechanic and a shattering mechanic uh above certain odds and i really like that um current current what happened this time we've got partisan activity out there and we can go back and check this as things go along but uh okay now then man this is an important unit oh this is an important <laughs> how many times can i say that uh this is a really important unit i know i we can't have them attacking from two sides at Changsha, and i also do not want to be attacking myself uh so that's something this is forest in the snow okay i like that i like the sound of that Let's actually put him here before I forget. Okay, now we got to get back to we're supposed to be doing this in an orderly fashion. Um, here's our report this time, convoy attack. We already looked over all this. Uh, we can also go look at uh, the alerts if we need to. Uh, forces. Oh, okay. So this just kind of gives us a count. Um, yeah, this is number. This is a number. Is it a strength number? No, it's got to be more than that. Uh, we've got a lot of, let's see, air groups, okay, naval pieces out on the board, uh, merch marines, okay, Japan has 120, interesting, but they've only got 10 escorts, huh, so they took those out of the South China Sea, and they put those escorts somewhere else, but it's interesting that they've only got 10, they're surely building more, but that gives us a little bit of a uh, advantage. I'm actually surprised they give us that information. Uh, you know, from a fog of war perspective, that gives us some good information because if they took the escorts out of here, where where else would they have put them? Uh, where else are they trying to move things? I mean, I don't know. We'll go look around for that, but I can't imagine they must be. This is South China Sea too, though. Hmm. Oh, this is the Indonesia one. Okay. I remember before we were looking for Indonesia, I was like, where the hell is the Indonesia one? It's on this side of what is now Indonesia. Uh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, casualties. These are just like 
uh, strength points, right? So China's taken 64, Japan's taken 62 on the land. Uh, India's taken 47. Dutch East Indies gave up too easy. Come on, guys. Uh, in the air, Japan has actually taken quite a bit. I'm trying to think of how that happened. Uh, naval, U.S. has taken the most. Uh, not surprising. They hit us at Pearl Harbor right off the top. Uh, Merch Marines, we've lost six, and we lost three escorts. Okay. Here's all of our units. Um, out of type, you know I like to go look at the subs and we've got the subs here the pike the grayling the grayling's got to get back in somewhere okay so let's just do that while we're here that's the gray nope that's the pike that's the grayling now that must have gotten hit i'm not sure why it's not in the combat report though uh, did i just miss that um all right the grayling's gonna have to come all the way to sydney so here we go and we're going to take it all the way out this way. All right. There it goes. There goes the grayling. And now then, the pike's got two of three. It still has five days worth of... I'm just going to leave the pike here. I don't see any reason to move it. I wonder if they did move this over to the Indonesian one, though. I'm kind of tempted to go over here just to find out. This is Indonesia. Yep, let's just do it. I'm going to sit right on this one now uh, and kind of move around. I'll give them a little more to think about. I mean, there's a lot of Japanese surface fleets headed this way. Uh, so I'll just give them a little bit to think about. All right, back to our reports. And let's look at uh, our, any other long-range subs. We looked at the pike. Where's the skipjack? Where the heck is the skip? Oh, there it is. It's in Darwin. Okay. That's fine. Maybe we'll put that up in the Indonesian one as well. What is this? That is the Indonesian. Okay. Hmm. I don't want it to be next to a land hex. I think we're fine there. Are we, though? Do I know that for sure? Not really. Uh, let's put him here okay right next to it uh that should be fun so you got an oil problem no not really the u.s has a low oil stockpile pile but we're gonna go deal with all that uh here in a minute because we're gonna change around what the british are sending out they've got to stop start stockpiling their own oil so we're gonna have to deal with that um pike skipjack grayling okay we got all that uh the bomber group is new and in um we're gonna go look at every unit this time so you know we'll, we'll get back to some of that headquarters okay oh you can look at the uh you can look at your generals here man we really need this guy to be replaced a uh, wobble who i was given a hard time last time so the burma headquarters what's the point of even bringing that across the sea for that uh wobble looking good or wavel whichever one it is six seven six that looks good uh walter short not so good i guess macarthur is eventually going to be uh one of our commanders i'm not a big macarthur fan but he always gets good ratings um Op opanasenko that's out here for the soviets is pretty good now let's look at the chinese commanders uh yeah not great the australian commander's good blarney all right this is all good to know uh mao zedong has got zero, like one mobility but he's pretty good at combat i would put his tenacity at probably a 10 if i was being honest george gifford okay cool uh no no actual ships now some escorts and merch marines have been sunk but no like uh, sh counter ship counters have been sunk uh submarines have a couple of submarines surprised they don't list those here uh game notes yeah we already knew all that okay so we've looked at reports now let's go to the war panel now one thing we haven't talked about is comment points and as you can see here for 120 we could rework the british encryption codes okay um or for 40 we can create a communications intelligence unit wow okay that sounds fun now they only have 33 also, you see victory points here. 
Currently, the Brits only have 53. Well, they need 1,954 for a major victory, so uh, we got some work to do. The U.S. has 25. It needs 338. Uh, okay. Uh, that seems low. Why is that so low compared to the Brits? Uh, there must be certain things out there that are really worth a lot that England, England, the Brits are going to have a better chance of taking. It's the only thing I can think of. China needs 486. Uh, and okay, so just the majors have those victory points. Uh, how is the morale looking? Why is the British morale so low? Uh, I mean, I get it. It's 1942, but that seems a little low. I mean, Churchill needs to make a speech. This could be to even up gameplay somehow, because the U.S. is at 125 and the U.K. is at 15. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, maybe there's something to this I don't understand. I'm going to have to go read that. Sorry, I, I, I thought I would generally know how morale works. I thought it was zero to 100. That's not true, obviously. But, you know, like Mongolia or New Zealand's not a five. So this morale must go into something else. Or, you know, it's like a cumulative number or you use it for something. I, I'm just going to have to go see on that one. Sorry. Sorry. I hate to, you know, say that. Like, you're like, well, I'm watching the game to learn it or watching you to learn it. I, I agree, but I just don't know exactly how that mechanic works. I'll know by next time. Um, okay. That's the war panel. We're not going to declare war on the Soviet Union as much fun as that may be. Oh, here we go. 60 co Now this is how you use comment points. Um, calm intelligence. So the U.S. has 91 comment points, all right? We could use that to help break Japanese intelligence codes, meaning we will get higher detection levels on things. We'll know where things are going when they move. We could also spot their submarines maybe easily, more easily. We could also create a communications intelligence unit for 40 points. Now, how does that work? Well, you place it down on the board, and wherever that is, you get increased intelligence uh, within a certain number of hexes. So honestly, I'd kind of like to do that maybe like, I don't know, let's click off this for a second, back up. I'd like to know maybe what they're up to here and here, but maybe we should overall break their codes. Um, who else has got comment points? They've got none. Nobody else has any. It's just the U.S. and U.K. We got the Enigma sh machine working over here for the U.S., evidently. Okay, let's try to break Japan's intelligence codes. 60 comment points. Let's go for it. Code-breaking attempts have been... Oh, well, gosh, dog. Well, shoot. <laughs> now, that's a more of a big general overall one. If we do this comment unit, you put the counter on the board, and you get increased intelligence all around that so like we could have put a doubt here in the convoy thing because now that japanese sub has evidently fled we could also put it in like the convoy lanes up here or we could could have put it right here to figure out what all they have here uh unfortunately that was unsuccessful gosh darn it advancements uh uk okay we're still advancing where we want is that true Large warships, anti-sub, naval air, a little bit of strategic, escort and interceptors. We're going to do a lot of planes, I hope. Although they don't get enough points, that may not be the best way to go. But, <sighs> okay, we're going to leave as is for now. Uh, the United States of America has no more. 5-3, we got six going on interceptors. Now, there is a law of diminishing returns here a little bit, but I really want good air superiority with the U.S. Uh, still looking okay, fine for China. Yep, and that, that all looks fine. We're just going to try to build this up. They're not that far away from advancing to 1940. When they do that, they'll get a little more artillery, so that's good. Uh, the time after that, they'll get a little more firearms, 1942 they get a few more guns and a defense so we got to really go for 1942 there 
Uh, okay, so that's advancements. I don't think there's anything more to be done there. Convoys, okay, 10 and 9. Now, these are definitely the two places we're going to have uh, convoys going through. So this is where we want our escorts. That's great. Uh, so the English, the Americans were going through the South Pacific. Well, the Americans are only going through the South Pacific, but combined, they're going through the Indian and the South Pacific. We can put all of our escorts there. I wish we, you know, I wish the Brits had one more, but that's okay. That's okay. Now, let's go back to the English. Um, in some respects, I don't want to skip around too much because I now have an orderly way I want to do this, but let's look at their oil. They're now only producing five oil. And we're about to lose this four oil here. They will only be producing one oil per turn. Uh, they need three for upkeep. So we have got to stop sending out oil, you know, by the UK. So we got to remember here, we're doing 10, 3, 2. We're going to bump those up, but we're going to bump the oil down, unfortunately. So we're going to get rid of these trade agreements with India, New Zealand, and Australia. Let's remember that. So they could send out nine here. They can only send out 16 production. So let's do one to Australia, okay. Oh, I didn't wanna, yeah. I hit create trade, but I hadn't put anything in here yet. Let's do, uh, what, what did I have it as? Let's do like six, let's do five. Let's do five, because the Americans are also pumping into Australia. So we'll do that, okay. And now the Americans are gonna have to be the ones that bring the oil. So that's Australia. I do wish they would put it up here in maybe another box, or at least put it right at the top. Now I know they will put it up there after the turn, um, these trade agreements we do. I, I But I, I do, I mean, that's a small nibble. I get that, that's a, you know, a small complaint. Uh, India, I want to do like nine and we'll do two to New Zealand. Um, India nine, that works, right? That's what we, we need to send plenty there. Okay, that looks good. And then finally we'll do New Zealand and we'll give them two from the UK. Okay, so now we've got our trade agreements with them. Now let's go to the Americans and figure out what and how and you know, we're not doing great on oil in, in the United States either. They're producing 20, but they need 17 for upkeep. That's because we have a lot of ships. Um, we've only got 26 in our stockpile. So we're going backwards. Oh uh, gosh. I think I kind of have to not send out any oil. Uh, you know, I mean, I we got to have a stockpile for the Americans. I mean, ultimately... That's where we're going to win the war is right there. So let's, uh, hmm, hmm. Some of these destroyers I have sitting out, I just wonder if that's a waste. It's a waste of oil for the upkeep and everything. I think I'm going to move some of the American destroyers back into port. I just think I'm wasting time even having them out of port. I wanted to do that like it was a patrol, but I don't think if you don't really have them on the escort lanes uh, or the convoy lanes, I'm not sure you're doing a whole heck of a lot of good. I guess we'll find out if a sub shows up in front of LA and starts blowing stuff up. Uh, but I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to take those back in, and I am going to send a little oil to Australia. Okay, so the Americans, the Australians, wow, they can only send one. Yeesh. Okie dokie. We got a real oil problem. Oh, wait a minute. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's go down here. We got to cancel that trade to the... Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so let's send six to the Australians in oil, and let's send uh, whatever we can, right? 38? But I don't want to... Well, I'm going to put some of those back. Let's just send three for now. We'll go back and change this next time. Um... We'll go back, if pulling those destroyers back in port saves us a lot of fuel for the upkeep, we'll, we'll send more next time. 
uh, but let's create this trade this time. Okay, so now the U.S. is sending this out to Australia. Now let's go to the build. The U.K. has got 50. They don't have enough to build anything this turn. We're just going to have to sit. Uh, we could build like an escort or not even, right? Escorts are a little, yeah, we could build one. And in 210 days, we'd get it. Yeah, no thanks. U.S. has got 285. I mean, I always like to be building transports, that's for sure. They don't need any more escorts. Uh, coastal defense, we don't really need any of this stuff yet. Eventually, we'll need a lot of landing ships, or so I hope. Interceptors are still costing 300 down here. I think we're going to maybe hold on to all of these points this time. Um, we could build another sub squadron. We could do a destroyer group. We've got so many battleships. It's just crazy battleship groups. It's wild. Uh, how much is a carrier group? 624. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. Getting crazy. Uh, we could build some more units. Uh, we will need you know, another headquarters or two eventually. But this time we're going to hold on to our points. Okay. I mean, we're really kind of through this. We can go down here and we can look at the other productions. The Soviet Union could probably build... No, they couldn't build a unit, actually. Uh, 103. They need 180. The This is the Chinese to build something new. Uh, the Aussies have, Aussies have 65. Um, they need 78 to build another one. The Canadians... Whatever, Canadians. I'm over you. Um, nothing going on there. India, 78. They've only got 36 in the stockpile. Can't get anything out of that. No joy there. Uh, same with the Kiwis. And of course, the Philippines have nothing. Okay, so we're not going to build a dang thing this time. Now, okay, so now I've gone through all of these backwards. Uh, these are just your map you know, what you are displaying on the map. Um, it's been raining out here by Hawaii, by the way, for like the entire game. Uh, the people in Hawaii are like, I paid way too much for my condo for this kind of weather. We could put the trade convoys on. Yeah, I always like to do that. Let's, let's keep that on. I don't know why I had it off. Uh, no battles recorded. Victory objectives. You can kind of see where they are. Uh, Calcutta, Lido is one up here. Interesting. Okay. So really, India, none of these are victory objectives except for Delhi once you get past Calcutta. We do have Colombo down here. Okay. Um, let's go and look what we got going on here. Low oil, low, you know, low supply. That seems a little ridiculous. In Seattle, this unit is out of supply. Oh, okay. This is low supply. This is one of those destroyers. We're going to start moving these back in to port and see if that helps us. I'm going to move all three of these back into port and I'm going to see if that really helps our situation oil wise because I think they're each using one oil every time and I think that might be a waste. Now I am going to keep this one out here. Uh, he's got one day of supply left. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep him out there. He can keep running back to Auckland. Uh, now, he's using American oil, uh, but we're going to keep that out there. And I actually think I'm going to put this into port in Br Brisbane. Okay, let's put that into Brisbane. Uh, I actually think we need to start contemplating bringing a big U.S. surface fleet to Australia, going through the loop. Um and that may include carriers. Uh, let's go down here and look. What the heck do we have here at Pearl Harbor? Well, we've got the Yorktown and the Saratoga, the Lexington and the Enterprise. These are all built back up now. Uh, we've got, you know, a lot of battleship groups. We've got several cruiser groups. We've got destroyer groups. Uh, this one's still, you know, has some repairing to do. But what I think I'm going to do is take off everything here. And I'm going to select the Yorktown and the Saratoga. Not for any other reason than they're the top two. We're going to take the West Virginia and the Tennessee. We're going to take the San Francisco 
and the third destroyer squad. And all of that fleet, I'm going to take down to Australia through the loop. Can I get through the loop? Whoa, come on, where's the loop? Can I get through the loop with that big of a task force? Ah, they're gone. Whoa, where'd you go? They're going to come out on the other side. I just think we're kind of wasting them. Uh, just having everything sit here. Uh, you know, we've got plenty here. We've got two carrier groups, a battle uh, ship group. We've got five more battleship groups at San Francisco that's repairing, that are that are repairing. We'll keep these two destroyers and a cruiser group with them. That's a lot of firepower. But we're going to get down there in Australia. Now, I know the Japanese main task force, we should not tussle with them. Don't worry. I'm not going to pick a fight with them. Or am I? No, I'm not going to. Uh, but I do want to get them around, either to Suva or Sydney. One of the two. Um, okay. Now then. Unit is out of supply. Okay, that's the one we moved back. That's the other destroyer we moved back. Now we've got the one out at the Johnston Islands. I'm going to put that in port. I'm going to put this in port. And we're going to let them sit there and hopefully not use any oil. Um, now, really, they should only be using oil when they're moving, but I just want to make sure. Unit has low supply. Oh, this is out by Pago. Yeah, let's have you sit in Pago. Okay. This one we're going to keep out. Uh, oh, this is the new one that we just brought through here. This is the Colorado. So we already had a battleship group that came through here. I'm going to put that up in Townsville. Okay. And start getting American assets over here. Low supply. All right. We moved that one. Uh, these guys are done for. Nothing we can do about that. I'm surprised the Japanese haven't taken them out and taken uh, Kota Baru. I think a, a, a human player would have done that by now. I mean, they're defenseless out there, essentially. Uh, the Exeter is out here. Do I want to keep something on this line? I mean, it does give a sub hunter bonus. Uh, we really put a hurting on those subs. Uh, I'm going to put it right there. Okay, and then we'll just bring it back in next time. Um, partisans. Okay, partisans, partisans, partisans. Okay, that all looks good. Now then, let's move. Uh, so this is how I'm going to do it every time backwards through here. And as I see things, I will move them. I will change them. Uh, but backwards through here, then the alert. So, you know, it kind of shows us things we really need to be cognizant of. Then I'll come look at the uh, U.S. West Coast. We know there's nothing I can really do here. I mean, in San Francisco, we do have the battleship groups. Eventually, as they repair uh, we could do something with them. Uh, but until we get transports, we can't move the air. Uh, this has a range of 14. This is a strategic bombing group. So these are like B-17s out there. Uh, nice, nice. I like me some big B-17. Yeah, so we've, we've got this strategic bombing group. So their range is 14. Wow, a nine strategic uh, that's the 11th USA bomber group. Holy smokes, those guys could do, do some damage. Uh, they cannot fly out here. They cannot get out here. They will have to be put on transports to get out into the Pacific. Uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's how the game should be. Now, if we look down here in San Diego, oh, that is the 11th. What do we have up here in Seattle? Uh, oh, those are just ships. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I thought we had another air unit up there. What's the one in San Francisco? That's the fourth U.S. bomber group. That's a tactical group. And then what do we have in L.A.? Another tactical group. Wow, we've got a lot of tactical bombing. So, yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, we'll be able to do a lot of ground support. But holy moly. Uh, okay, that's on full support. That's on full support. I think the uh, strategic bombing group, uh, which was this one, I don't know. We can just put that on, like, mission. Uh, we don't want that out. You know, strategic bombing what exactly? The ocean? Um, oh, I was going to I was gonna say, I noticed when I was up here, if you look down to the left there, there's a blizzard in Calgary. Uh, that's why I never go to Calgary. 
there is a blizzard on the plains of Calgary. Okay, so, no, I mean, there's nothing to move for the Americans here. Uh, there's nothing to do up in Dutch Harbor. That unit is just sitting there until the Japanese maybe make a play for it. Midway, this is actually a pretty strong unit. That's up to 8 to 10 now. I'm going to take that off priority. Ooh, that, rem that reminds me. That's a good thing to look at in the report uh, type. Well, okay, carrier operation. Oh, this puts it like naval first with our big warships, large warship. That Prince of Wales, man, that could do some damage. Uh, the Colorado, why is it out of supply? Where is that? Oh, we put it into port in Townsville. Okay, perfect. Uh, Nevada, Pennsylvania, blah, 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 blah. Warships, where's the Exeter? That's the one. Uh, that's over here. That's right. Okay. Well, this is a very handy way of doing this. Um, these guys, we've dealt with all those. These are all 1942 warships for the most part. We have some 1941s that should start to forget, progress. The 11th here is, you know, not so hot. A 1940. What about the 10th? Did we put that in port? We did. Okay. The long-range submarines. Then I just wanted to look at what do we have on priority. And you can see it here in green. Okay, that's a perfect unit to have on priority. Uh, first RAFF. That's another really good unit to have in priority. we got to build up some of those bombing units. What about this tactical group? Right. Okay, this is the one we brought down from Suva. That is priority. That all make Those three make sense to me. Those three make sense to me. 22nd Army Group. Uh, that's in China. Okay, I don't think we need that anymore. I wish you could click on the unit and bring it up, you know, like multiple windows. I understand why it's hard to program that, but I wish we could. Uh, let's take that off. Go back to our re reports. There we go. Um, let's make sure that we don't have anything else on priority no Maya. Okay, that's probably a dang good thing to have on priority. So No Maya and the 114th on Canton. We'll go look at those. And the 112th, where's that? Is that Moresby? Yeah, okay. We, we definitely want that one. But we'll go look at No Maya. 8th Brigade on Suva. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, I think we have a really nice... Uh, set up there let's go look at nomaya and let's look at this unit it's up to seven and ten really nice okay cool cool it's uh on garrison now let's turn it to active i'm just going to go ahead and do it now uh because i'm eventually going to do it anyway so we may as well put it on active uh now it's less of a hit if we do it right now. I could change this over, but I don't want to pull off the, the UK right now. Uh, Suva, this is active, right? Yeah, it's active. And it's up to 6 and 10 in strength. Good. And we have a force here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think there's really a whole lot to do out here. Oh, Canton Island, 7 of 10. I'm going to take that off priority. It's fine. I mean, you know, they're, it, that's going to get taken out. Whether we're 10 of 10, 8 of 10, 9 of 10, you know, I mean, it's going to get, it's going to get taken out anyway. So we've already dealt with all of these units for the most part. Um, gosh, darn it. I wish I could get this somewhere. We could fly it out to Johnston Island, but I don't think that really does much for us. Wish I could fly it all the way to Pago Pago. Uh, I can't wait to get transports, man. We got to build some more. I'm, I'm tempted to even build more they just don't show up forever and that's the killer 278 in the stockpile Who? I, I just don't want to get to a point where we lose the game and i look back and i say well hey at least i've got you know 1200 transports i just kind of feel like we got to keep building them though we don't have enough to move our units around but then once we move those units to where we want them eh, then what i mean as the Americans, though, you do have to move from friendly port to friendly port. Okay, I talked myself in, into it. <laughs> That'll be ready in six months. Oh, man.
That's how it happens. That's how you go on a spending spree with your production points. I, 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 I do want more air units. Okay, so next time I'm getting air units. I don't care what it takes. Uh, this is all fine. We talked about that. This is all good. See, if you go through this in some kind of logical manner, you've moved almost all of your troops by the time you start doing this stuff. Uh, Moresby, uh, this unit... Click on Moore's. There we go. It is now 10 of 10. We can take that off priority for now, uh, but it's all built up. That's great. That's great. It's got, you know, it's dug in. Everything's good. I'll probably bring another unit over there as soon as I can, um, but who knows how long that's going to be. Uh, all of that stuff's repairing. This all makes sense. We've got this in Dobby, we could put it down in Headland, but this is connected to the road. I think this makes the most sense. Uh, the Japanese are now in Dili, if you can frickin' believe that. Uh, yeah, we've got our tactical group here. We should bomb anything within 10. Wow. Yeah, we can't get out and bomb that. Hmm interesting we're gonna do it on naval and we're gonna do it you know full support so i kind of I, I, <laughs> look at me eyeballing that uh but i don't think we can uh, we can bomb that um okay this all looks fine if we go down here we haven't looked at this other than to say hey new stuff's come in uh, oh, I'm glad I did come in over here because we now have the De Reuter and the UK Ramillies, uh, and they can both go probably to Colombo, right? Uh, or do we take them over here to Perth? Why don't we take them over here to Perth? I like that. Let's take them over to Perth. So, or we could take them up to Darwin even. Hmm. Huh, he says. Uh, let's put them in between for right now. We'll put them right there. So we've got, let's look at the DeRoyter. It's a five surface, five anti-sub, two anti-air, five defense. Okay, what's the Ramillies? Ten on the surface. I like the look of that. Anti-sub, anti-air, defense. That all looks good. We may put that in Darwin. Uh, the port level's of two. Uh, that would be too. That's fine. We could do that. Uh, eh, we'll see. We'll see what else happens. I'm glad I went and looked down there, though. Um, Java is completely Japanese now, as is Borneo. Good for them. That's how they should be playing. Uh, we're still holding them off here. As a matter of fact, let's just click on this and let's hold down Shift, bringing, uh, bringing bringing why is this okay yeah th this does bring it all in three to two we actually have an advantage there now they're doubly du dug in i don't see any reason to do that though because i think we've got them trapped here i cannot believe they haven't taken the philippines yet when they've taken all these other things, in some ways, it might be a really smart tactic. I guess I'd never thought about that for the Japanese, but they can kind of take the Philippines whenever they want. Why not use those for... Now, the only risk they run is the longer they go on here, the more chances I run over here and try to re-enforce uh, the Philippines. And if I can get troops on here and like make this a, a hideout, that would really be something because Manila, let's take the this off here. Manila is kind of its own supply source. You know, it's got a five. Well, is that true? Hold on. Yeah. See, I mean, Manila is a supply source. And so we can sit in here in Manila forever. And anything we get on this island is getting supplied. Uh, unless they bring a force up here and blockade it, which is really what they should be doing. I'm not sure, you know, that's an AI thing. They they really should blockade this port. And for naval, so naval units have to get within two to interdict, or they have to sit 
a one out, I guess two out, and they could move it into the port the next time, uh, that would blockade it. Or with air, they have to be four away, and they can uh, interdict there. So uh, the AI should probably be doing that. Uh, but honestly, I kind of like the strategy. Go take Rangoon instead of uh, Manila. Makes makes some sense to me. Okay, so we've uh, now moved up to, let's move into China and go look around, take off enemy action, and let's just kind of get a clean map here. Okay, so, you know, the communists are just going to sit back here in the hills uh, doing nothing, sharing food. Um... We're holding on to this town. That's a cavalry unit. Okay, I'm just going to keep holding on to that town. How about that? We've got this back here. We need to kind of trade places. I said, but I think maybe... Hmm. I think I want to bring the cavalry unit out here. Do that. Why did that just happen? Cavalry unit out here. Do that. There we go. Move the headquarters back across this and put the infantry here. Uh, I like that. I like that setup. Um, he's in the plains now, so he's where he feels most comfortable. Uh, we've got a nice strong infantry unit here. It's one of our strongest. 23 of 30, second group army. Uh, they can just sit here. What's the supply situation out here? Four and four. Yeah, I wish he was on seven, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to start moving this unit back. Uh, I think I'll leave him right there. Let's take these off for a second. Yeah, that's a town. We're going to leave him right there for now. For now. Then they're pushing this way as well. They're really making a play for Chung King. Um, too bad I've already used my everybody Chung King tonight joke. Ah, gosh, see, I just did it. I just did that joke anyway. It's not a particularly good one. Uh, let's move this up here. Maybe like here, here. I mean, we're going to get this on the outskirts of Chungking. This air superiority group has no protection now. So we got to get some stuff up here and uh, ASAP. Um, hmm. Guess he can come across the river next time. We'll get this army up here. Gosh, that's only a 10 out of 30. This is a 20. Yuck. Okay, this commander is fine. I think I could even put it in this town and it would get everybody pretty much that it needs to command. But no reason to move it. I'll just leave it right there. Cheng Sha is now under some pressure. A little bit, a little bit, right? This Japanese unit's very strong, so we got to watch out for that. Uh, we do have backup here that could come across if we really need it. Uh, we've got the headquarters there, third war area. He's not a very good general. Uh, we haven't said that often. These guys are fine out here. Um, now then, we've moved the air unit back. They did good work last time. Let's put them on priority repair again. Uh, yeah, okay, let's put them on priority. No, that's not what I wanted on priority. I wanted the air group on priority. Uh, yeah, they may need it. Uh, 18 of 20, no, that's why I took them off. Okay, that's good. Uh, this is only four of 10 strength, ouch. Uh, this is 10 of 10, it's holding its own here. Set to active. Yeah, if we can. Yeah, we got it to active. Okay, that'll strengthen it a little bit. Um, we're just going to kind of sit here for these guys this turn. We'll really know what else to do. I could move this up to this town, which is, oh, Mandalay. Okay, let's do that and have it start trying to dig in there. So they have a hard time coming up this railway. This unit can stay here. It's got all of these units in its range. It's range six. That all looks fine. I've got nothing else to move over here. I do have this uh, flotilla sitting here in Calcutta, but we're just going to leave it right there. That's fine. Bombay, Madras. We could move this out of Madras. Madras is not worth victory points, so... You know, I could rail it up here. Was it 30 points to Calcutta? 
That's a full division. But I don't want to just like not have anything over here. I have a feeling the Japanese could land back here and then we'd be in all kinds of weird situations. Um, okay, with that, I think we've done everything. Let's run the turn. Let's just make sure ah, <laughs> you knew I was it wasn't going to be that easy. Let's go back down here. OK, we had nothing come through, but we've got the U.S. two full U.S. carrier groups coming in here. Um, am I going to take them out to Suva? I may. I cannot believe that's a level six and Sydney's a level seven. That doesn't seem quite right to me. This should really be like a at most a five, but probably a four or three. And Sydney should be a nine. But that's okay. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, well, maybe I just did. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let's end the turn. We looked at everything. I like going through all of that stuff first, and then we go across the map. Uh, because you've usually moved almost everything at that point. Another good sign is I'm I'm thinking, God dang it, the the turn, you know, the the episode's almost over. I want to keep going. Hell, maybe I'll put another one up tonight. Um, we're now into March of 1942. Let's see what the Japanese have in store for us. We're getting close to what historically was the apex, you know, the peak of Japanese expansion. Um, you know, of course, you, you have Battle of Coral Sea and that stuff. But really, on the land, it was kind of the end of the expansion era as as well. As we got into the summer of 42, the U.S. started to flex its muscles at that point. The allies, who were completely wrong-footed at the start, uh, started to figure it out a little bit. Well, for one thing, they got transports. Uh, <laughs> historically and on in this game, we hopefully, oh, look at that. Okay. Wow, they're really, they really are going to come for Calcutta. I think we're going to have to rail that unit from Madras up there uh, and try to do something. I don't know, that Brit uh, headquarters up there that we have at DACA, uh, I, you know, that's going to be da low down on my list of priorities of moving things, I feel like. But we've got to get them out there by, like, I don't know, Port Moresby probably is where that would command. As a matter of fact, I think that's exactly where we'll go with it. Now, one thing I hadn't thought through is transports, um, how to escort those. That's probably a good use for your destroyers is uh, escorting transports, but we'll, we'll get there. I'm not exactly sure how all that, those mechanics work yet. Fun game, fun game. Okay, we got an attack there. They knocked us back. They're, man, they're coming hell or high water for Chungking. Now they've moved beyond Changsha. I think that was a really bad move. They've moved into Kota Baru. Now, I, just, I had said, you know, why haven't they taken Kota Baru? Okay, now they're attacking in, you know, they're coming into Changsha here. They've got us on two sides, but we held. It looks like we held there. They're trying to get around here, but now I think we can cut that unit off and kind of do what we did last time. We can cut it off and then just cut, you know, then destroy it. That's what I'm hoping anyway. I'm starting to wonder if we should get aggressive with some of these Chinese units. Uh, the Japanese don't seem to have a big presence down here um, into, you know, modern day Thailand. Um in Vietnam, I, I'm starting to think maybe we should do a little push here and, and threaten them here. I don't know. Maybe that's crazy. Crazy talk. Because if they do go on the offensive over here, we'll, we'll maybe rue that. But I'm starting to think maybe we try to come down here and put a little pressure on them. They let us take this town here with no fight at all.
Okay, so that's the end of our forces in Malaya, as that unit just got absolutely blasted. Really interesting. I'd be curious to see if they're running through Indonesia. I figured everything would be South China Sea. I mean, they've got a lot of stuff they need to supply here. Uh, I don't know where else it would go, though, under, other than Indonesia. I was thinking maybe they're trying to supply their units here on Borneo. They've now taken, by the way, they've taken Bali, Papan, and Tarak, and we didn't even talk about that. Even more oil. All that Dutch oil now in Japanese hands. That's a killer uh, that they've been able to get that. All right, that's the end of their turn. Uh, Chinese 16th Army shattered. India's 28th Mixed Brigade shattered. India's 8th Mixed Brigade shattered. Fleet has no supplies. Fleet has no supplies. U.S. low on oil stockpiles. I guess I got to call it an episode. Um, I kind of don't want to. I may come back and make another one. I mean, the game comes out tomorrow. Uh, I might as well get up as many as I can. You guys may have questions over the weekend as you start to play the game. Uh, let's look at the let's look at the production really fast before I sign off. Uh, 103 now in the British stockpile. Okay, uh, the American stockpile 394. We can start building some planes. Um, what's going to deploy this time? Oh, that's what we're supposed to do. Remember? Oh, second division, second British. Let's go see where we can deploy that. I'm just really curious because I'm afraid it's going to be down there in Africa. I could have used the mini map, uh, but I really hope I can put it somewhere in India. No, shoot. That's too bad. We got to wait on transports. Yeah, we can put it down here. Ah, crud. All right, we're going to put it right there, I guess. Too bad, too bad. Did the U.S. have anything show up? Yeah, infantry corps small. Where can we deploy that? Well, you know where. Over here in the U.S. We haven't talked anything about Portland. Let's put that sucker in Portland. Uh, it's a rainy town. Look, it's still raining here. Double heavy rain. Oh, let's go look at where our uh, carrier group. Yep, there they are. Two carrier groups and four surface. Um, God, that's just making me nervous. To look at it. What do we get uh, next time? We get the 24th division for the U.S. Uh, the Brits don't get anything till the Valiant uh, battleship. On March 14th okay ooh I'm so tempted to go put this up in Darwin but I'm afraid it would get trapped so let's let's have it come into man I wish Townsville was better than that I think I'm gonna go put it in Suva it's a level six. I just can't get over the fact that's a level six um, okay it's in there it's in there. It's in Suva. We've got two carrier groups ready to rumble in Suva. Interesting. Okay, when we come back next time, uh, we've now deployed. So we did our first thing. Now we'll go on to the combat log, the reports, so on and so forth. That will be in the next episode. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Thank you guys so much. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm really enjoying it. I, I, I would recommend you get this game and play around with it. I really would. I, I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I want to keep playing it. I think it looks great if you love board games, and I do. I love the counters. They just look like such nice clipped counters. Uh, but the gameplay, most importantly, the gameplay is very good. We will have to see how it plays out when we do surface uh, ship battles and carrier battles. That will be where things matter. Oh, let's go put this in port. <laughs> Here I am. I'm just like, I just want to make sure I don't forget. Uh, so that's that was an American sub. I just want to make sure it gets repaired. All right, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Strategy Gaming Dojo out.